John Wolstetter, the senior fellow, a senior fellow with the Discovery Institute, and national security expert, attorney, and author of Sleepwalking with the Bomb, discovery.org, of course, is their website, uh, is of the opinion that the Obama administration, if I have this correct, this is the publicist pitch, uh, Discovery Institute senior fellow national security expert author and attorney John Wolstetter explains the frightened motives behind the Obama administration's decision to appease Islamists, even at the expense of allies. John, welcome to the program. Tom, glad to be with you and your audience. Thank you. Um, when, where, how, under what circumstances, I don't get this. I do not see this administration... Well, first of all, let's define terms. By Islamists, are you talking about people like uh, Osama bin Laden, or the late Osama bin Laden and his buddies, uh, who think that uh, it's appropriate to kill people in the name of religion, or uh, you know, they're, they're Christian variations who, who uh, you know, blow up the Olympics and, and kill people in the name of religion? Or are you talking about people who are simply evangelical, and think that their religion should be running the government, like all the Christians who come forward and say this is a Christian nation. Well, by Islamist, I'm referring to, and obviously in the case of bin Laden, who uh, arranged the murder of 3,000 people on American soil, he, he gave it an entirely proper response. Uh, to uh, He gave him the kind of medicine he deserved, but I have in mind leaders of and their, their factions who lead certain nations in the Middle East, in particular... I have in mind the the leaders in Iran after the fraudulent election in 2009, when instead of siding uh, and putting pressure on the regime, uh, he he uh, stayed aloof, allowed the regime to crush the rebellion in the hopes that he could negotiate uh, an, a nuclear accord, which had I think no plausible chance to succeed in Egypt. He uh, Mubarak was headed on the way out after 30 years of rule, but he uh, pushed for. Prompt elections. He being Obama. Yeah, President Obama. So, but and but hang on just a second, John. First of all, in Iran, the guy who was just recently elected ran on a secular slate rather than an Islamist slate. Uh, no, 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 no. This is. I'm sorry. The all of the seven candidates in the election that was just held in Iran were pre-selected by the Assembly of Experts. It's an 86 member body. Yeah, and this Iran was this was the most the secular of the bunch. Died. No, but none of them none of them should be thought secular like we are. They're all approved by the regime and none of them are reformers in the sense that we would understand. Okay. He supports the nuclear policy. Are, are you Iran. suggesting that if if we had a president elected here in the United States who said that he was a Christian, he was going to allow Christianity to inform his values, he would uh, in fact even start a war and refer to it as a crusade as George W. Bush did that uh for instance, Hindu, uh, you know, Hindu India would be justified in in coming in and taking out George W. Bush because they have to protect the world from from fundamentalist Christianity. We don't want any more Tim McVeigh's. Well, uh, I think you're conflating very different things because the Islamist I don't see the difference. The Islamist threat is a much broader and deeper threat than any of the. Uh, 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 and, and the Christian evangelicals, with the rare exception of nutcases like McVeigh, are not people who are engaged in, in, in a, a global that's and violent jihad. That's true of Muslims, too. With the exception of the occasional nutcase, most Muslims are just normal, ordinary people who want to have a decent paycheck and they want their kids to go to school. Well, except that they elect Islamists like Mohammed Morsi to power, who is called Jews, Apes, and Pigs, and who wants the release of the And whose own sheep. people kicked him out. Well, uh, they, they don't want an Islamist well, they, in they charge. They want a secular government. Well, the, uh, I would How is this different from what happened in Massachusetts in the in the well, you know in the in the decade assume, before the Tom, American Revolution? Tom, Tom, I would not assume that they are going to have a secularist government in Egypt. They are still a minority of the population. The reason that they kicked him out after a year is because his gross economic mismanagement has got the uh, the country immiserated. Uh, in ways that were unimaginable even to Egyptians a year ago. And in Turkey also, uh, uh, Erdogan has over the 10 years virtually dismantled the Ataturk secularist republic, and he has brought in 
militant Islam to the point where you had demonstrations by uh, the seculars in in uh, protest back in the spring. That sure, and these guys are all wars. these guys are all playing proxy wars with Egypt right now. On the other hand, you've got Saudi Arabia that very much wants a secular nation. They've been arming the military over and in, in fact they just uh, committed eight billion dollars to the military in Egypt because they don't want an Islamist republic. They want a secular republic on their border. But the secularists in Egypt are not a majority, and they're not as well organized as the Islamists, and it's far from clear where this is headed. So what, what, you know, what's our jo- dog in this game, John? Why are you suggesting that, or what, first of all, what are you suggesting we should be doing? Well, we, at this point, we have very little leverage with Egypt. I think it would be a mistake to cut off aid at this point. Our dog in each of these countries should be the same, to prevent an Islamist, jihadist leader from coming to power and extending influence throughout the region. But wouldn't our doing that simply cause that to happen? I mean, if if Mexico and Canada engaged in a conspiracy to prevent Ralph Reed from becoming president of the United States, I'm guessing most Americans would go out and vote for him. Look, what I'm saying, prevent, I don't mean we go over there and organize a coup, but we, we would provide, we can try to provide some support for those secular and modern modernist elements. But the more we do that, they perceive us as meddling in their internal affairs and they get PO'd at us. Well, but the other side is going to provide support, and if we don't, it's a stacked deck, and, 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 and the people we would like to win will not prevail. No, if we don't, they might look at us and say, you know, hey, maybe minding your own business is a good policy. We should follow that. But our adversaries, uh, you know, people like the Iranians and others are going to provide support for the Islamists, whether we support the secular or not. A, you're conflating the people with the government. John Kennedy, back in 1963, spoke to this issue of separating government from people and having policies based on recognizing the people. Let me, this is only six seconds long. Just, just listen to this. No government or social system is so evil that its people must be considered as lacking in virtue. Very simple. I mean, and this was part of, uh, if you go look it up, it was his, it was his June 10th, 1963 speech on peace, where he repeatedly, over and over and over again, called for world peace and for U.S. non-intervention in the world. Well, except that during the Kennedy years, uh, after all, John Kennedy said this, and yet we do know that he certainly tried to do something about Fidel Castro in Cuba. Right. Uh, the thing is, my, but he didn't my, try to take out the Cuban people. He didn't say, well, "Let's no, firebomb Havana." Well, no, uh, he 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 obviously did not want to do that, uh, and that's why, along with. But Khrushchev, George Bush did that. He did that in Iraq and Afghanistan, and all we've got for it is a is a lousy T-shirt and a lot of blowback. Well, look, we went into Afghanistan because terrorists that were housed there, that were uh, in bed with the Taliban government, came here. The Taliban offered to give us Bin Laden. Actually, we were offered bin Laden not by the Taliban, but by uh, Hassan al Tarabi in 1996 when Al Qaeda was no more than 100 people. No, in 2001, two days after 9 11. Mullah Omar offered, he didn't get offered to us. He, he said he will arrest Osama bin Laden and give him to a third party for trial. Well, Bush said, no, was, I want to bomb your country. That, that was not credible, and we were offered by Hassan al Tarabi. Hang on just a second, John. Hold on. This is the Tom Hartman program. I'm sorry, that guy steps on both of us. John Wallstetter, okay. you can read all about it over at discovery.org. John, uh, thanks for being with us today. Tom, thanks for having me. Lively debate. Thanks yeah, indeed. For Good talking with you.